We all know that Elon Musk and SpaceX are the front runner for establishing the first human settlement on Mars, right? Or maybe it could be NASA with their plan to extend the Artemis program from the moon outwards to Mars. But what if neither of these American entities were the first to reach Mars with a crewed mission? What if it was the People's Republic of China who planted the first flag on the red planet? Now, that might sound far-fetched to you, and in fairness, you might be correct. We mostly said it to be provocative, but the idea does hold some merit. China has very big plans for the planet Mars, and they are moving fast to carry out their mission, much faster than NASA. We know that for sure, at least. Of course, there is still Elon Musk. If his Starship rocket works out as expected, then Elon will probably leapfrog everyone straight to becoming the first techno king of Mars. But the future is never certain. According to the plan, China will be the first nation to return samples from the planet Mars to Earth for study. This would be an epic milestone, and then they have a blueprint to follow that up with a crewed mission as early as 2033 to begin construction on the People's Republic of Mars, or something like that. There's a lot to talk about here, and you might be surprised by just how real this is getting. This is the space race. So the latest breaking news is that China has a new plan to return samples of dirt and rock from the planet Mars to Earth as early as the year 2031. This would be two years faster than NASA and ESA's own sample return mission. The target date was announced in late June during a presentation by Sun Zhuzhou, who is the chief designer of the Tianwen-1 Mars Orbiter and Rover mission that successfully reached Mars in February 2021. According to the presentation, China is targeting a dual launch mission with liftoff in late 2028 and a sample return to Earth in July 2031. China's mission, named Tianwen-3, will consist of two combinations, a lander and ascent vehicle, and an orbiter and return module. The combinations will launch separately on Long March 5 and Long March 3B rockets respectively. Though China did indicate that if their own prospective super heavy rocket, the Long March 9, is in service by this point, then both payloads can travel on a single launch. Admittedly, China's effort will be more simplified than the American and European-led return mission. China will gather dirt and rock collected from one small area using a process they describe as surface sampling, drilling, and mobile intelligence sampling, potentially using a four-legged robot. So this will not be a wide-ranging or diverse sampling of what Mars has to offer. It's all going to be coming from one relatively small location wherever they choose to land the robot. The ascent vehicle will consist of two stages, using either solid or liquid propulsion, and will be required to reach a speed of 4.5 kilometers per second. After rendezvous and docking with the waiting orbiter, the spacecraft will depart Mars orbit in late October 2030 for a return to Earth in July 2031. By comparison, the NASA and ESA campaign will bring home samples collected by the American Space Agency's Perseverance rover, which has been exploring the 45-kilometer-wide Jezero crater since February 2021. The project will employ a European-built fetch rover to grab the samples and place them aboard an American-made Mars ascent vehicle called MAV. The MAV will launch the sample container into Mars orbit, where it will be snagged by a European Earth return orbiter. This sample return will be significantly larger and much more rich with a variety of materials and will inevitably lead to better quality science compared to the Chinese return. But China's mission will be more streamlined and therefore faster, meaning they get the glory of returning the first interplanetary material. And of course, China already has experience in delivering samples from the moon. 
the nation's Chang'e 5 mission touched down on the moon in December 2020 and shortly after delivered the Earth the first lunar samples since the Soviet Union's Luna 24 mission back in 1976. It's undeniable that China's research is already contributing greatly to our understanding of the planet Mars. In May 2022, Beijing reported that China's rover had discovered hydrated minerals on the site of an ancient ocean called Utopia Planetia. These indications of water date back just 700 million years. It was previously believed that Mars had dried up several billion years ago, but China's study of these mineral deposits is changing that hypothesis. And just recently, on the 29th of June, China released a series of high-resolution, full-color images that visualize the entire surface of Mars as seen from the Tianwen-1 orbiter. After circling the planet over 1,300 times, the camera has documented every feature of the Martian landscape, and the photos are pretty surreal to look at. China has also done something similar for the moon, releasing a high-resolution global map of our planetary satellite. Of course, not everyone is super stoked about China's recent success with interplanetary exploration. In 2021, both NASA officials and members of the administration of President Joe Biden warned that Chinese exploration may pose a threat to American interests. And during the presidency of Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump, U.S. officials repeatedly stressed that Russia and China pose a substantial and growing threat to the United States' long-held space dominance. To make matters even more worrying, on June 30th, we got reports that NATO has listed China as one of its strategic priorities for the first time, saying Beijing's ambitions and its coercive policies challenge the Western bloc's interests, security, and values. For obvious reasons, the NATO report identified Russia as the single greatest threat to peace and security, but said that Beijing's military ambitions, its confrontational rhetoric towards Taiwan, and its increasingly close ties with Moscow posed systemic challenges. Unsurprisingly, in response, China said it firmly opposed NATO's declaration, calling it a completely futile warning. So that's not going well. The people in charge are not getting along right now, and that leads us to genuinely wonder what kind of disruption China might cause if they actually become the first nation to set foot on Mars. As it stands right now, China plans to send its first crewed mission to Mars in the year 2033. So far, that's the earliest timeline set by any space agency, and only Elon Musk has claimed that humans might arrive on Mars earlier. Elon still thinks a crewed starship might land on Mars by 2028, or by 2030 at the latest. NASA, on the other hand, hasn't released a specific timeline. We know that they anticipate having their Mars Transit HAB ship delivered to orbit around the moon on Artemis 12, and if we extrapolate the Artemis timeline out, assuming that there is one mission per year following Artemis 3 in 2025, then NASA's ship won't even be ready to depart until 2034 at the very earliest. Wang Xiaojun, the head of the state-owned China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, outlined the country's Mars plans for the first time in June 2021. Wang said the first step in China's plans is to use robots to explore Mars to sample its surface and help select a place to build a base. The next stage would be to send astronauts up to Mars to build a base station there. Then, the third and final stage envisions forming a so-called Econosphere, facilitated by a large-scale Earth-to-Mars cargo fleet departing Earth every two years. The initial robotic phase of China's exploration plans would rely on chemical rockets, the standard propulsion used today for launches. Early human missions would use a number of heavy-lift rockets to construct the Mars spacecraft in orbit. These would then rendezvous and dock with a ferry stage using nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion for Earth-Mars transfer. 
cargo would fly to and land on Mars separately, and a Mars descent and ascent vehicle would transfer astronauts to and from the surface. The Econosphere phase envisions developing reusable fleets of spacecrafts, propellant depots for refueling spacecrafts in Mars orbit, and the use of cycle orbits to accomplish long-duration flights in a short time with minimal propellant. These cycle orbits are actually an idea put forward by NASA's astronaut Buzz Aldrin, the second person to walk on the moon, and basically uses gravity assists to maintain a spacecraft in a continuous orbit that intersects with both the Earth and Mars. Something that the Chinese plan does not consider are the challenges of sending humans on long journeys through deep space, including cosmic radiation and the effects of microgravity. So far, nobody really seems to know what to do about that, but we're sure that some very smart people are working on it. Oh, and by the way, it's not just Mars either. We should also mention that China is planning to run a human colonization of the moon basically in parallel to their efforts on Mars. Unlike NASA, it doesn't seem that China has any ambition to reach the moon in this decade with a human landing, so the Artemis program astronauts will likely be the only living thing on the surface of the moon for a few solid years. But that doesn't mean China won't be deploying a small army of robots to join them. China's plan is for the autonomous construction of a moon base using robots and 3D printing to establish a habitat in advance of human landing. While NASA just wants to reassert their dominance by again being the first to land people in this century, and then they'll figure the rest out later. The advantage to NASA with the Artemis blueprint is that this does give them several years of testing long duration human stays in deep space, both in the orbital gateway station and on the surface of the moon. By Artemis 10, Crews of four people will be spending 30 days at a time on the moon, and crews in the Gateway Station will be spending more than 100 days in deep space for each mission. So, obviously we don't know what's going to happen in two years from now, let alone 10 years from now. The Chinese do have a plan, and it does make sense on the whole, but at the same time, it is very ambitious and fast-paced, and leaves out a lot of very important details about how to ensure this mission is safe and effective. NASA, on the other hand, also has a plan to reach Mars that makes a lot of sense and happens to include a lot of slow, methodical testing and tech demonstrations on the moon before trying to send anything serious to Mars. This will take longer, but they aren't skipping on any details. And then there's Elon Musk. He's currently building the largest and by far the most powerful flying machine in human history, and he's just going to go for it. Well, not him, he's going to send other people, who he's already warned will quite possibly die in the process, but it will be a glorious death in service of the Techno King, right? But who do you think has the best odds of landing on Mars first? And if it happens, what do you think is a realistic timeline? 2030 just seems preposterous. Maybe 2035 is cautiously optimistic? I'm not sure. Drop your theories below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.